he uh, describes it feeling like hot thumbtacks being pressed into his flesh, and it was a uh, pretty, pretty bad sting. And this was a seasoned beekeeper who's used to being stung all the time. Uh, he says he would not care to ever have it happen again. Hello, and welcome to Out West, the official podcast of the Western Governors Association, a bipartisan organization representing the governors of the 22 westernmost states and territories. I'm Jim Ogsbury, Executive Director of WGA. This episode of Out West highlights states' efforts to control a new threat to the West, the Asian giant hornet, also known as the murder hornet. Controlling the spread of invasive species is a priority for Western governors who in 2019 launched the Biosecurity and Invasive Species Initiative under the leadership of then WGA Chair, Hawaii Governor David Ige. Today, WGA Policy Advisor Bill Whitaker talks with an expert in Washington State who is tracking these massive new invaders. Hello, everyone. I am Bill Whitaker. I'm a policy advisor at the Western Governors Association. I work on policy issues related to um, invasive species, forest and range management. And we are here today to talk about one invasive species in particular, um, often called the murder hornet, um, more correctly called the Asian giant hornet. Um, we are here um, joined by Sven Eric Spiesiger, the managing entomologist with the Washington State Department of Agriculture, uh, an expert in this new invader to talk to learn more about um, the Asian giant hornet. So Sven, um, just to start off, um, how did you get into this line of work? What drew you to be an entomologist? Actually, I was helping a cousin complete a Boy Scout merit badge uh, chasing dragonflies. And I had such a good time chasing dragonflies that I went out the next day and did it. And I never stopped collecting insects. And so that's really how it all happened. And so about the, the hornet, um, so can you explain us what is a murder hornet, and how are they different from other types of hornets? Sure. Okay. So, uh, first of all, we're just going to stop using murder hornet. It's a very smallly used term, uh, basically, uh, that was uh, thrown out by the Japanese media several years ago just to kind of drum up some interest. Uh, if people really want to find out about it, uh, they'll, they'll use Asian giant hornet because uh, there's a lot of information about Asian giant hornet out there. And it's uh, one of 22 species of hornets in the world. They all belong to the same genus. I don't want to get too technical, but it's the genus Vespula. And uh, here, at least in Washington state, uh, we don't have any true hornets. Uh, we have bald-faced hornet, which is actually a type of yellow jacket, uh, just a bad common name. And uh, we have uh, unfortunately now collected a specimen of Vespa mandarinia or Asian giant hornet. And so they look enormous, the pictures I've seen. How did they get so big? And are there other hornets that are larger? There are no larger hornets. This one is the largest hornet in the world. And uh, they can be up to two and a half inches long, which is, yeah, it's freakishly large, actually, for, for a hornet. Um, I'm not actually going to be able to answer how they got so big. Uh, uh, most animals uh, develop their size and everything else over thousands of years of evolution. And there's reasons that drive that, and I wasn't there for it, and I have seen no studies talking about how they got so big, uh, but it's, uh, it's true they are the biggest of the hornets. There's a few others that rival it in size, but, but not quite. I would say the largest hornet here in the United States is also an introduced species. It's uh, called the European hornet, and it came over in the late 1800s. And uh, it's only about three quarters the size of this. And most people, quite frankly, are, are really kind of uh, weirded out just by European hornets. So when you see this in comparison, it is terrifying. They seem pretty scary to me. Um, so yeah, why, why are they so bad? And what, what risks do they pose to the US? Anytime you get this or any other invasive species and uh, they, they are able to get a foothold and they establish, uh, they become a new part of the ecosystem. So that's bad thing number one. Uh, they are going to displace other organisms that are supposed to be there. And so you never want that happening regardless of what the species is. This one is referred to as an apex predator, which means 
nothing messes with it. It is the king when it rolls around out there. And because our ecosystems here didn't have that niche being filled, uh, this is a new thing that a lot of other insects are gonna have to deal with out there. This thing likes to eat large insects. It also likes to eat social insects. By the way, like a lot of stinging insects, uh, they will vigorously defend their nest and things they believe are theirs. So if you were to stumble upon a nest, it could be very dangerous. Uh, they will definitely attack to defend their hive. They're never going to hunt anybody down or, you know, chase somebody down a trail just because you're uh, walking outside in the open. So people can still go outside, they can still hike, they can still, still do those types of things. But if you should happen to step on a nest, it could be a life-threatening situation, unfortunately. Uh, in British Columbia, Canada, a uh, nest was found in Nanaimo, which is a small community on Vancouver Island. That is just to the north of us here in Washington. Uh, when they were trying to first locate the nest, uh, one of the beekeepers who was involved in that was stung in the chest. He uh, describes it feeling like hot thumbtacks being pressed into his flesh, and it was a uh, pretty, pretty bad sting. And this was a seasoned beekeeper who's used to being stung all the time. Uh, he says he would not care to ever have it happen again. Uh, as they located the nest and attempted to take it out, uh, the, main, uh, the main guy doing uh, the activity was stung seven times through double layers of protective beekeeping gear. And uh, it was not uh, entirely pleasant for him either. He also describes not wanting to experience this again as well. So how did they get here originally? Fine question. Uh, we're never really going to know for sure. Uh, what we do know is after running um, some genetic tests on specimens from Canada and specimens from Washington is that we are likely dealing with two separate introductions from two separate countries. Uh, so it's clear that they're coming in probably through some form of international trade, whether it's um, uh, wood chips, vehicles, uh, clay pots, tile, you know, it could be any type of commodity really uh, because this overwinters as a mated queen and the queen seeks out an area of refuge. It's in, the most likely scenario is a mated queen who was overwintering ended up in a shipping container or some commodities destined from Asia to here. And uh, just, we were the unlucky recipient um, as was Canada. Could the hornet spread over the entire country or is the range more limited? Uh, not unless it was human assisted. Uh, it's not entirely clear how long it's been here. We're doing our first real uh, survey work this year. Uh, there are some models that suggest it would do very well anywhere east of the Mississippi. I mean, when you look at the climate, habitat, uh, ability to establish models, the eastern half of the United States lights up like a Christmas tree. Uh, out here in the west, uh, kind of the plain states and uh, south, southwest states look like the habitat is not really suitable at all. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this side of the uh, Cascades in Washington and Oregon and Northern California appear to be ideal habitat for this species. So at least we're going to be dealing with it here if it's established. So what are you doing in Washington state to manage the spread? Actually, we've been doing a lot of public outreach, and this has been very useful. So 100% of all of the detections turned in right now have been turned in by the public. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't have official activities going on. So we've started delimiting surveys, and what that means is in areas where we definitely know we have a uh, positive, uh, we have survey crews out setting uh, baited traps for these. Once located, uh, we are working with uh, Washington University and a few others uh, to develop uh, tracking devices. We will trap them live, we will track them back to their nests, and then we already have an eradication protocol in place to take out whatever nests we find. Uh, but paying a few surveyors to go out is not a great way to cover a wide countryside like we have up here. So we've been doing quite a bit of social media work and uh, we just did one follow-up article with the New York Times and it went uh, horribly viral. So it's on everybody's lips here and everyone's stuck inside and has nothing better to do. So uh, all of Washington has been pretty much telling us every time they think they've seen one. So we've, we at least have the public on our side helping us um, 
helping us to make sure this hasn't gotten out of control. We've received several reports, none of them positive yet. A queen specimen was collected by our counterparts in British Columbia in a place called Langley, British Columbia, which is about 10 miles north of where we found our specimens. And so what that means is we do know we had a nest that went through its complete life cycle last year and uh, was able to at least kick out one queen. And so what can everyday people do or not do to help you as you try to manage this? Well, uh, sure, a couple of things. So, and it's it's not just with us. Um, everybody knows their surroundings. You know what's supposed to be there. You know when something is weird. Uh, take the time to report it. This was reported on our invasive species um, reporting app, uh, our original detection. And if the person hadn't taken the time to do that, we'd be another year behind in responding to it. So let us know. Is there anything people should not do? Well, you shouldn't go out and smash every bee and wasp what you see. And uh, we've had a little bit of that going on as well. Uh, bumblebees are actually extremely beneficial. And um, I'm a trained entomologist. I live it, breathe it, think about it all the time. Most people are not. I, I get it. Uh, they all kind of look alike. Uh, so what you want to do is you don't want to be just killing everything out there because you think it might be Asian giant hornet. We want you to get a picture if you can and send that in and let the professionals deal with it. And we certainly don't want people attacking a nest by themselves. Is there a reason to like them? Um, is, do, they, do they do any good, either potentially here or back in their native ranges? Well, uh, there's two lines of thought there. So uh, just like they would be replacing something in the ecosystem here, back in their native range, they are part of the ecosystem. Uh, they probably help uh, maintain a delicate balance of all animals uh, where they are. So for that reason, you like them. Um, so what other invasive species out there are more dangerous or destructive or equally dangerous or destructive? How does this rank in the hierarchy of risk from invasive species? Well, two separate things there. Uh, dangerous versus destructive. Um, you know, emerald ash borer, of course, took out a whole genus of trees all across the country. And no one was looking for that because in its native range, it does nothing. And that's a tiny little beetle. It's not really dangerous at all, although there were a few incidents where standing dead trees fell down and killed people. But in general, it's a little beetle and it killed a whole genus of trees, including the one that makes baseball bats. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. That was, um, those are some great answers. So it was, it was great to have your thoughts on this. Since we talked with Sven in the end of May, several more mated queens have been discovered. One in Custer, Washington, and a second in Bellingham, Washington. And in June 2020, the Washington State Department of Agriculture learned that Asian giant hornets had killed five beekeepers' hives in September 2019. Thanks for listening to this episode of Out West, presented by the Western Governors Association. To learn more about our ongoing work on biosecurity and invasive species, please visit westgov.org slash initiatives. And be sure to join us next time as we continue to discuss significant issues facing the Western United States. Finally, WJ would like to thank Sven for sharing his expertise on the Asian giant hornet. So long, everyone.